Why is the shopping cart always in the top right of the screen? How do companies predict my purchases? Why do prices end in nine? Why do fast food companies use red and yellow in their logos? Why do restaurants always have one expensive menu item? Researchers, marketers, and very curious people seek the answers for how we make decisions and how we choose products. Clicksuasion finds the secrets that companies use and shares them with you. Why do I feel better when I bought the last remaining airline ticket? How do I make choices based on colors and fonts? Welcome back to the Clicksuasion podcast. This is Katana Lumlin in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Today we're going to talk about Black Friday, crafting consumer experiences for 2021. It might seem a little early to dive into this content, however, you can never start crafting your strategy for Black Friday too early. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to cover, uh, I guess, three steps, basically three strategies that you can use, some expectations and trends for 2021, and then of course some key dates to be on the lookout for. So of course, start as early as possible to get ahead and discover who your audience is. So imagine your brother's birthday is coming up and you're thinking of getting him a gift. He is an outdoorsy type. He goes hiking, biking, and loves to golf with your parents. So what's the first thing you do? You might pull out your phone and start browsing Amazon for a gift. Or if you know of a local golf shop, you might start browsing there. Hopefully you're shopping local, but Amazon is super useful, so I totally understand. But every time you browse on a website, even Amazon or a local shop, those businesses are hopefully keeping track of their audiences or viewers browsing data. So you can get this if you have Google Analytics on your site or if anyone makes a purchase, you can pull your sales data to see what people are purchasing. One of the things you can do here to prep early, if your company has been around for a bit, look at your previous year's sales history. What products and services sold around this time last year? So this, when I say this time, I mean um, October, November. Have a look at what products and services you might need to highlight from your sales data instead of just kind of all willy-nilly choosing whatever you happen to have on the shelves. At this point, you have enough leeway to kind of plan ahead. And that actually brings me to uh, the next bit, choosing what coupons or discounts to highlight and which is best for your business. Pretend you really like reading books like me. You're a book fanatic and you find out from a friend that Barnes and Nobles is going to be giving out a free signed book with every purchase over X amount of dollars. So let's say it's a $30 purchase. So every $30 purchase, they're going to give away a free signed book. If you're a book fanatic and this is a a fairly popular um, bestseller book, how likely are you to shop at Barnes and Nobles to get that free signed book. So this is an example of an alternative way besides uh, the typical, you know, uh, $10, $15 off, 20% off sales that you might see during Black Friday. You can get creative with your offerings and deals. So you can you can spread out the sales from time sensitive deals. Um, Big discounts, of course, are always uh, one of the main things you'll see during Black Friday, but you can offer special bundles, the the buy one, get one, the free gifts in a bag or add-ons. And then, of course, the loyalty points payouts. So you shop with your store, you get more points during your Black Friday sale. There's a lot of fun ways to take advantage of the sales and pull people in, make your business stand out with all the other hundreds and hundreds of Black Friday sales that are going to be going up. Imagine it's Black Friday, maybe 8 p.m. You're really not thinking about going out. However, you get an email notification on your phone that you've gotten a newsletter from let's say Home Depot, and the subject line is, time's not exactly on your side. Well, now your in- your interest has been piqued, and you kind of want to see why time isn't on your side. Of course, it makes sense that it's Black Friday, time really isn't on your side. Well, what sales are you missing? 
that's one way to kind of spread out your sales and uh, offer different deals and discounts to your audience. Last thing I have to say about prepping early is making a backup plan. If you live in the South, you might have heard of Chick-fil-A, one of the most popular uh, chain restaurants right now, fast food restaurants. If you've ever had the opportunity to go through the drive-thru, you might have seen something a little different from your typical McDonald's or Burger King. So Chick-fil-A is known for their customer service when you pull up get into the line. Sometimes you might see it wrapping two, three times around the building. 20 or 30 cars, everybody has, you know, their music playing, they're waiting in line, but the line is actually moving fairly quickly. This is due in part to the fact that Chick-fil-A likes to send out humans, people, real people with tablets or checkouts, um, usually underneath a, a large tent that you'll drive through and have their employees take your orders, two, three, four cars at a time versus their one or two drive through checkouts. That's kind of their backup plan because they're so insanely popular that they've had to figure out another way to accommodate the number of orders they get at peak time. So typical 8 p.m. Black Friday shopping probably looks a lot like this. If you're in store, you're going to see a line of 20, 30 people, everybody standing. Hopefully uh, with with COVID, they're all practicing, you know, safe distancing. distancing. Uh, but it, it's probably going to be fairly busy. How can you, as a business business owner, as you're planning for Black Friday, kind of prep for these longer lines. So one one of these ways is to enable your your cashiers to arm them with your tablets or smartphones so they can kind of free wander throughout the store and assist with transactions to cut wait times. So employees meet shoppers on the floor to speed up checkout, ensuring the flow of traffic seamlessly. The other part of this, especially with the other part of this, especially with COVID concerns, is to offer alternative online sales. So perhaps you'll have, you know, in-store sales you're offering 20% off, but maybe if you shop online, you're shipping an extra gift. So you can manage your sales this way to kind of direct people to your preferred checkout method, whether that is online or in-store. And then, of course, having a backup plan to the backup plan. So you've armed all your cashiers with tablets and smartphones. They are ready and the power goes out. Now what do you do? Well, the old school way is to break out the knuckle busters to capture payment in the event of power loss. So a knuckle buster, in case you didn't know, if you think back maybe to the 70s and 80s before the advent of the digital payment, a knuckle buster would take a copy of your card, like a carbon copy, you'd put it in this little machine and you'd uh, slide it and kind of bust your knuckles as you did so and make a copy of the card to then, you know, later file for payment. There's no need for knuckle busters anymore. A lot of point of sales, uh, current point of sales should offer offline services. So therefore, if your internet goes out, if your power goes out for any reason, you can accept payments that will then run later once the power is back. Planning ahead, having a backup plan, and then a backup plan to your backup plan to ensure everything runs smoothly. So that's what I got for prepping early. The next bit I've actually talked a little bit about in previous podcasts, and that's going to be crafting an omnichannel strategy. So I have a question for you. What will you wear next spring? Do you know? The fashion industry knows. They've already picked out what you'll wear next spring. They have the products all lined up, and they're crafting their marketing strategies already. In fact, the fashion industry plans at least six months to a year ahead of time to ensure they have enough time to craft their marketing strategies. When you're thinking about when you should send out these uh, emails, text notifications, print articles, and a lot of this has to do with consumer behavior. So consider that most people are paid on the 1st and the 15th of every month. If you 
share your sales or if you start sales a month before Black Friday, which Black Friday this year, 2021, I believe is November 26th. Consider that on the 1st of November, people are likely to be paid. And on the 15th of November, most people are likely to receive a paycheck between the 15th and the 26th. Where does that money go? Most likely towards bills. Use this to craft your marketing strategies to best target your audience. So if they're paid on the 1st, maybe you have some sales that target that first week of November. Same thing for the 15th, which is a Monday this year. Maybe you have sales that start that week. And then keep in mind that most people, are they likely to have cash? Are they going to be paying by check? Are they going to pull out cash for Black Friday if they're shopping in person? And then of course, with COVID, we have to keep in mind how many people are going to be willing to shop in person and is it going to be better for your business to focus on online sales or in store? Not that in store is a bad thing to focus on, just which is going to be best for you. Can you put more energies into online or can you put the proper procedures in to have an influx of people in store for Black Friday? And If so, how do you mitigate the risks is one way would be to spread out your sales, you know, to that first week of November, to that third week of November, however, whatever works best for your business and then send out appropriate emails as needed. Again, the month before, a week before, a day before, during, and then of course, following up. Another way to build an omni-channel strategy is to build hype on social media a week before Black Friday. So you're browsing on your smartphone on Facebook and you see an ad for an iSpy contest. Audi has set up a social media campaign where every day of the week until Black Friday, they are showing two images and inviting their audience to spot the differences. The first person to DM them with the correct answer wins some small gift card or prize. They've gamified their social media, and you can do this from with a digital countdown, with an iSpy, with a um, kind of a wheel of fortune wheel. There's, there's tons of ways to gamify things on social media. And then what about after Black Friday? So imagine it's just after all of that crazy shopping. Your family has bought way too much stuff. You're a little worried for your credit card bills. And you're just kind of happy to sit at home and uh, browse on your phone. Except you get a notification, uh, a quick message from Facebook Messenger saying, Hey, these glasses you wanted are still in your cart. Check out now for 20% off. Oh, right. You didn't even remember that you left those in your cart. Man, those were a great gift you wanted to pick up for your uncle. I should buy those now before they're gone. This is an example of an abandoned cart follow-up. You'd be surprised how many people forget that they've left something in their cart. It's very easy to do. You're, You're shopping on your phone. You get distracted by the kids, the pets, the spouse. You know, you just pulled into a different conversation and you forget that you just added something to your cart. And one way that we as business owners can kind of pull our audience's attention back is to send abandoned cart messages through Facebook Messenger, through email, uh, whatever the best point of contact is for your audience to kind of pull them back in and increase sales. Imagine it's November 16th, you're just getting home from work, and you're grabbing the mail before you head inside. As you open the mailbox, it's practically overflowing with print ads crying for your attention, letting you know about Black Friday sales. There's the regular coupons from McDonald's, you've got Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, Best Buy's trying to get your attention. All of these major brands have mailed printouts to you. How can you differentiate your business when everyone is sending out mailers? So maybe there's a Best Buy ad that are like, oh, here, you know, go online. Well, now you have to type in, you know, www.bestbuy.com, which we could all do, but that's kind of difficult. Eh, don't really want to. But what if they had a QR code that you could just pull your phone up to and it automatically would open it up right there on your mobile? 
So adding a QR code is one way to for your print designs, for your print uh, strategies to reduce the barriers to entry and get people on your website looking at your specials. To learn more about how the lab is growing, visit clicksuation.com forward slash supercharged. Now you've started to craft your omnichannel strategy, you have the timing for your emails, your social media campaigns, your abandoned cart campaigns, and your print articles, mailers, magazines, whatever you're sending out. What ties all of these together is going to be your messaging. So keeping it positive while also encouraging your audience to take action now and hopefully attend whatever sale it is you'll have for Black Friday. So imagine you're scrolling on Instagram thinking about a gift for your girlfriend when you get a notification from a local boutique that you follow. They've posted a sale, 12 hours left to rock your leggings with a reshared image of a woman showing off her floral patterned leggings with black boots. This boutique is focusing on FOMO or the fear of missing out. They're providing an urgent message, 12 hours left, and social proof with a reshared image of a customer enjoying their previous purchase to encourage their other viewers to purchase now versus waiting till later. For Black Friday, this can be anything from one week until, three days till, one day before, or the reverse of that, one day left, 12 hours left, two hours left, however you want to frame it, to let your audience know, hey, this is ending soon, this is your last chance, without necessarily saying last chance. And besides messaging, the last bit to crafting an omnichannel strategy is to prepare your staffing. So hire early, to train early, to make sure that your team has the knowledge, skills, and abilities to tackle Black Friday and the influx of shoppers that you'll most likely see. So imagine it's Black Friday and the spa that you go to every month is having a deal on a buy one, get one massage. Not saying that your spa will, but that would be pretty nice, yeah? So imagine they're having that deal and so you call them to book your next massage and then potentially book your free massage and you're put on hold. Oh, well, that's fine. We've all been here before, you know, listen to some of the calming spa music and wait a few minutes, maybe play with the dog if you're at home. But after two minutes, we get a little antsy. After five minutes, we're wondering if this is a waste of time and any longer than that. And even if it is, you know, buy one, get one, we're more than likely less interested in this deal. And then the longer it goes on beyond that, the more frustrated we get with this brand, the spa that we previously enjoyed quite a bit, and we're more likely to let that color our future uh, engagements with the business. So hire early for Black Friday so that your team can have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to not only answer calls in a timely manner, uh, answer in-person returns in a timely manner, but also have the training to answer any questions or even angry customers that you might get and to keep that in a kind of positive message framing if possible. So if someone returns and they're very so if someone brings a return and they are exceptionally upset, your team can handle it in a calm and positive manner that will have the customer most likely returning to your business even though they may not have gotten what they wanted. So you've begun your preparations early, you've crafted your omnichannel strategy, and now it's time to enhance your customer service and efficiency. And a little bit of this ties into uh, the staffing that I just mentioned. Um, 
and a little bit ties into what I mentioned earlier about spreading out your deals, spreading out your emails. It doesn't have to all happen in one day, Black Friday. Your deals can happen a week before, two weeks before, a month before, whatever fits your business, or even, you know, uh, a couple of the shopping days following Black Friday. So most people are paid on the 1st and the 15th and Black Friday this year is 11 days from payday. So adjust your deals accordingly to match your business. You'll have the week before Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. Um, Sunday isn't an official holiday but it is still a day of shopping and then of course Cyber Monday and um, Giving Tuesday if your business donates to charity. So craft and update your return policies and your automated responses. If you have Facebook Messenger, if you have a chat box on your website, update your messages to reflect your Black Friday policies. If you have an update to your return policy, most commonly they're 90 days to return in new or like new condition with the original packaging. You might want to add that to your chat box, to your Facebook Messenger, so those quick and easy questions are easily answered. And then, of course, the other side of this is if you have any apps that would have any updated policies. This will hopefully save time for you and your team in this busy season by having some of those easy questions ready to go on your app, on your chatbot, on Facebook Messenger, or wherever you have automated messaging. We've covered so far prepping for Black Friday early and why we think that's important, how to craft an omnichannel strategy through print and digital, and then enhancing your customer service and efficiency. Now I'm going to go over some expectations and trends for this year's Black Friday. More than likely we'll see an increase in online shopping and online orders due to some concerns over COVID and some people being more comfortable purchasing from their couches. This doesn't mean that there won't be any in-store shoppers, just that we may see an increase in online shopping and then in conjunction with that an increase in returns, especially in retailer clothing, as people pr make purchases and then are unable to try them on, realize they don't quite fit, and then send them back depending on what return policies are in place. This in turn may affect shipping. We might have shipping delays. Hopefully everyone is ready and Amazon will be on point with their orders and returns. However, it's not it's not unlikely that we'll, we might see a few shipping delays and we may have some more updates on that as we get closer to the date. And then something else to be aware of is longer sales or different sales for different weeks from some of the more well-known businesses. We saw some of this last year where they started advertising in uh, October for November and then even some of their deals lasted a little bit longer than they would based off of previous years. So key dates to watch for is a month before October sales, the week before Black Friday, which Black Friday is November 26th this year, 2021. Small Business Saturday will be November 27th. Uh, not a particular holiday or sales day in any way. Sunday will just be a day of shopping on November 28th, and then Cyber Monday on the 29th, followed by Giving Tuesday for any charitable donations on the 30th. That's all I have today. I'm Katana Lemlin in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Thanks for listening to Clicksuasion. Subscribe to the podcast, read our research, and get in touch with us at clicksuasion.com. You can also find us on Twitter with the handle at clicksuasion.